All right then, so our program today, this is the first of 10 meetups. Uh, quite a lot of you have joined, which is cool. Um, just a reminder that I'm recording this hosted meetup on YouTube and it'll go up later on um, after I give it a, a bit of an edit to get rid of the stuff at the start. Uh, today we're introducing the topic of photography and introducing this meetup series and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about picture making and then we'll get into have a chat with each other. We've still got some more people coming in. Um, so today drawing with light and we will get on to the Obscura which was the first camera that was developed. So an introduction to me, I'll keep letting people in while I'm talking now, uh, up for a few more minutes anyway. Uh, so an introduction to me, I'm a local guide. I have been for rather a long time, I think 2015, something like that. Um, I've been lucky enough to go to Connect and the summit before it was called Connect. Best summit ever. <laughs> um, just a few ground rules. If you could keep yourself muted during the presentation, that would be really handy. And if just today's session, if you could hold your questions until the end, in the future sessions, I'll be doing questions on each of the topics as we go. During, there's not much you can try in today's session, but during the future ones, if you want to try a technique, just feel free to do it while we're doing the, the session. Um, and if you need to get up with, for a break, don't feel that you have to sit here for the whole meetup. Just get up, wander away and come back. So we're going to be doing 10 workshops. Have you all seen the post on Connect that's got all 10 of them laid out in one post that's got the, the structure of the sessions? Um, if there's any other topics that you particularly want to see that aren't there, if you can just comment on that post and we'll see what I can do about adding them in somewhere. So next thing I'm going to do, this will probably take a little while because there's quite a lot of us, but I thought we'd just quickly run around the room and I'll call names because I can see the full list. Um, if I butcher the pronunciation of your name, I apologise in advance. What I'd like you to do is just say who you are and what city you're from and what you think photography is in one sentence. So Aditya? Hello, greetings everyone. Can anyone hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. My name is Aditya Patel. I'm a level seven local guide from Mumbai, India. It's great to see you all here. This is uh, this actually your first meetup I, I'm attending. Uh, actually, this is the first uh, meetup of yours which I'm attending. So um, I'm really glad to become a spectator and like learn a lot of things and exchange ideas from this. Cool. Cheers. All right, thank you. Adrian, number one. Hi guys, um, Adrian here. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I got, kind of got to because I was trying to play around with me on iPad and also on PC. So I just want to know what the differences are. But anyway, I am Adrian. Um, I'm from Malaysia, but currently based in Manchester. Um, I'm a level eight local guide, say level eight. <laughs> um, and photography, um, I really do like it because it kind of captures that special moment in that special time. And with my memory being so quite, not quite there sometimes, it, uh, photos really help me to remember and recall those special moments. Does Adrian number two want to speak as well, just because it's funny? Nah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think Ananda's having dinner, so we might skip him unless he's there. He is there. Yeah, I am. I am. I've lost myself. Oh, there. Ah, hi, everyone. Um, I've known Paul for a while. Uh, we go out on photo shoots together, and we have a lot of fun. Um, hope you had fun, have fun with his uh, presentation today. And Anya. I'm getting the, yeah. Hi, I'm Anya. I'm from Poland. Uh, I'm level eight uh, local guide. <laughs> and cool. uh, photo uh, photography for me is a kind of art, um, uh, but I'm not talented at any. So <laughs> that's why I like photography and taking photos. Well, we're all talented in one way or another. 
photography does take some artistic talent, which we'll get into later in the series. Cool. Um, Carolina. Hi, how are you? I'm Carolina from Argentina. Cool. Welcome. Little A local guide. And for me, photography is a way of win my vision of the world with people. I like I like taking photographs. I'm learning and right now I'm on a phase where I'm exploring uh, every kind of photography. So I'm glad to be here learning from you and with you. Hello everybody. If you haven't seen Carolina's photos on Connect, I recommend that you do. Thank you. <laughs> David. Yes, um, I'm from Melbourne, level six. Um, been dabbling in photography, believe it or not, since 61. Um, Kodak, runny cameras or starlight cameras, whatever the word, black and white things. Uh, been doing it on and off uh, gee, yeah, well, since 61. Um, and just bought myself recently uh, a reasonably entry level uh, Nikon D3400 digital camera. Um, it's a, another learning experience with digital. Um, I used to do my own developing and printing um, until uh, one of the kids decided that, that she needed a bedroom back. <laughs> I think you beat me on the longevity front. I've only been doing taking photos since 1984. Uh, well, there hasn't been continuous since 61, but certainly that's when I started getting into the hobby. Um, cool. Literally as a 12-year-old. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, I'm not too sure which is your first name, so I'm just going to read them all. Guru Krishna Priya Srinath. Hi. Hello. I'm, I, I'm from India, Chennai. Cool. I visited Chennai yeah. in 2007. It's a cool spot. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm an artist by nature and teacher by profession. Awesome. I'm a playwright seven. Uh, my artworks include uh, typewriter art and then uh, uh, craft works in uh, newspaper and uh, uh, color papers. And then uh, uh, my other artworks are uh, like uh, oil on canvas, oil painting on canvas, and then rangoli. And uh, uh, I am an artist turned teacher. Cool, that's great. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks. Typewriter art's quite an interesting topic. We might chat about that sometime. Yeah. <laughs> and with regards to photography, uh, it's my hobby. And uh, I take photos and afterwards when time permits i look back into the photos and uh, uh, have beautiful memories about the places i have visited that is a very good reason to take photos yeah That's the primary reason for most of us yeah cool. okay thank you very much thank you we'll move on to ishant Oh, he's dropped out, I think. We'll see if he comes back. We'll move on to Jane. Hi, Paul. Hello. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Jane from Ukraine. Uh, I like um, to share my photo. I like to take photo, to share my vision on the world with everyone and a great way to um, uh, save my best memories. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Jessie. Hi, I'm Jessica from Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I'm a Latin local guide. And to me, photography is all about capturing the moment or objects or persons with different perspectives. Sorry, perspectives. <laughs> cool. Oh, welcome, Jesse. Oh, Alpha's turned up. He's going to rule my alphabetical order now. Um, Julian. 
Yes, hello everybody. It is good to see you. Thank you, Paul, for uh, all the workshop that you have uh, you have and will organize. Uh, so I am Julien from France, and I am a local guide level 10 and a connect moderator. So for me, photography is a freeze of what I see, and uh, it is always good because it's a way to uh, also see good souvenir when we look at our picture. Cool. Justine. Uh, hi, everybody. My name's Justine. I'm from Cairns, Australia, and I'm a local eight level guide. And photography to me is the way that you um, see the world at a particular point in time. Thanks. Cool. Kafui. Kafui Doris. Hey, Paul. Hi. Hi, everyone. I am Kafui from Accra, Ghana. I'm a level eight local guy. And I have an, a crying baby in the background, so I'll just turn it off for now. Sorry, guys. That's OK. I, I am happy to be here. And I take photos to compare timelines, to take things that happened in the past and the present. That's the reason why I love photography. It's cool. You can see the change in the world then. Yeah, exactly. Cool. And Karthik. Uh, hi, Paul. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Karthik from uh, Melbourne. I'm a level a local guide, level seven. Photography to me is about capturing those special moments so that we can share it with the rest of the folks. Looking forward to these classes here. Thanks. Hopefully, that'll be interesting. <laughs> Ollie. Yes. <laughs> I show this. Hi, uh, I'm Oliver. I'm from Auckland, New Zealand. Um, I'm level eight local guide. And the photography is a very important part of my life. Uh, I do some paid work as well. And also for my personal life, I uh, wherever I travel, I bring my camera. I take heaps of photos of me and my kids in everyday life. So I want to see um, what Paul's going to bring us today. Cool. Ollie also does drawing. He's uh, drawn me before during a meetup. <laughs> yeah. a bit I, I did a little bit of drawing and a little bit of graphic design. Yep. Cool. <laughs> oh, moving on to Madhan. Hi, Paul. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Madhan Krishna Pradhan from Nepal. I'm a level nine local guy. Uh, regarding the photography, uh, it's kind of captured the moment and it's kind of art also. So most of the capturing the moment is the best thing to remember in the future. Thank you. Cool. Uh, next we've got Maria. Hi, I'm Maria and I'm from Melbourne and photography for me is capturing what I'm seeing that I really like. Uh, usually, uh, I guess capturing the beauty that's around me or the wonder. And at the moment, I've got to focus on mushrooms and fungi and the flowers, nature. And it's also history. It's also art. It's documenting, documenting my life, I guess, because I've got a very bad memory. And it's an important part of my life. And um, yes, and I've been, and I'm a local guy, level 10. Cool. Cool, thank you. And Nita. Hi, I'm Nita from New Delhi, India. I'm a level nine local guy. And uh, photography for me is like, like everybody said, it's capturing a particular moment in time, something I would like to remember. And uh, I've noticed one thing that a lot of people may be taking the same photographs, but a personal, a personal perspective. Everybody's photograph seems a little different because I guess the way they look at it. I'm very, uh, the most interesting part about photography is the composition. I'm a total newbie. My husband and son are amateur, uh, avid amateur photographers and I've sort of bitten the bug because of them. But I've just started new and I 
think uh, our team in India, they are very, very enthusiastic about it. Thank you. Yeah, cool. We'll do a little bit of composition later in the course when we're into the workshops. Um, Prakash. Thank you. There's two Prakash. Hello. Hi. I'm Audible. I'm Prakash Panchal from New Delhi, India. I'm level 10 local guide. And uh, photography is me just like evidence of life and keeping your memories and clicking as much as you can. Because uh, when you're having your phone in your hand, you can take so many photos and clicks. Thank you. Cool. Renuka. Renuka? And we'll move on to R Roberto. Roberto? Oh, we'll move on to Rosie. Hi, everyone. I'm Rosie Kuli from Mumbai, India. I'm local guide level seven. For me, photography is storing the memories. Actually, I don't know much about photography, but thanks to local guide, I've started learning clicking photos properly. And today I would like to learn more from you all. Thank you for organizing this awesome session. Thank you. Cool. Well, we'll definitely get started today with some learning. Renuka's popped back up, so we'll try her again. Hello. Oh. Hello. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, my name is Renuka, and I'm level seven local guide. And photography is to, for me is storing and capturing the memory where I uh, visit, and uh, storing the memory. Uh, thank you. Cool. Uh, Sandeep. Sandeep Nirvan, we've got two. Uh, uh, hi, Paul. This is Sandeep Nirvan here. Cool. Welcome. Uh, hi, Paul. This is Sandeep Nirvan here. Uh, I'm a uh, normal person. Like, uh, I'm not that much expert in photogra taking photographs. So I'm here to learn something new. Thank you, Paul. This is, I think, second time I'm uh, attending your workshop. So thank you very much. Cool. Welcome. The other Sandeep. Hey, hey, Paul. Uh, oh, you got a there. <laughs> oh, good. You can say Sandeep one, Sandeep two. I, I won't mind. Um, uh, this is Sandeep. I'm a level nine local guide in Melbourne. And uh, I, I just, um, to be honest, I last year I found about Connect and been more active there. And uh, photography. Um, I'm, I'm one of those guys who always, you know, just trying to learn something new. And then, you know, after a few weeks, it's like, it's all the, the desire dies down. But uh, uh, this time around, I, I really want to pick up, pick it up again and just continue polishing my skill. For me, it's all about capturing the moment and reliving the moment when, you know, after a year or something. Um, and I love taking pictures of my son. So it's a... Uh, just trying to improve my skills and everything. So thanks thanks for organizing this one. I hope I can learn a lot of things from you. Cool. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We learn from each other, I suspect. Okay, Sultan. Hi. Hi, Paul. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Sultan. I'm from Bangladesh. I love photography. Uh, photography for me is uh, like what I want to uh, want. What I see, I want to see another local guys and every everyone. And photography is my passion. I very much curious about photography, and every day I like to improve my photography. Hopefully, from this session and another nine sessions, I will learn more about photography. Thank you. Awesome, Shivani. Shivani Eswara. No, we'll move on to Shreya. Hello. 
another quiet one. Move on to... Ah, here we go. Hi. Hi, Paul. Uh, I'm Shriya Bharai from Mumbai, India. Local guide level 8. Uh, it's very nice to be a part of this uh, workshop. Photography for me is like capturing those memories because we have to spend our time with our loved ones and we don't actually recollect. So capturing those moments in the photographs of what we would cherish later on. So that's how I enjoy photography. Thank you. Cool. Um, Shubham? <laughs> Hello, sir. This is Shubham Hi. from Hello. India. Actually, as, as a photographer, I am a mobile photographer only, sir. And I like capturing mountains and the birds. Thank you, sir. Cool. Savita. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Savita, level nine local guide from Nepal. And for me, photography is uh, definitely an art and uh, also a way of telling a story through the lens. So cool. Thank you. Vibe. Hi, Paul. Hi, everybody. Uh, basically, uh, I'm from Melbourne. Uh, for me, photography is uh, nothing but what I see I want to show to people. And I, f I feel I, I see something different. That's why I want to click it and I want to present it. So that's where I like the nature photography mostly and uh, architecture, the interiors and all in Melbourne, I like a lot of buildings. So I keep on clicking. So yeah, that's it. Actually, it's really amazing to see all these people and uh, local guides. Thank you. Vibe has livened up our Telegram group a little bit in the last couple of days with some Melbourne. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Cool. Thanks. Vikram. Hello, hello everyone. I'm Vikram, level six local guide from Rajasthan, India. For me, photography is a communication. Share some experience with others. Yes, uh, photograph play an uh, important role in everyone's life. They connect us to our past. They remind us of people, places, feeling, and uh, stories. Thank you. Cool, excellent. So I'll just pop back to the couple of people that joined a bit later on. Alpha. Hey guys, uh, new faces and uh, old friends, how are you all doing? Uh, my name is Alpha, level 8 local guide from the Gambia in Cyprus. Um, my, I love photography. I used to cry as a child whenever a photographer comes to my house during eat to snap pictures and they would just, he would just fool me with the lens and I just keep moving around with it, thinking I took photos. But yes, um, whatever captures my eyes, be it nature, be it food, anything that I find beautiful, I take it. Thank you very much. Cool. We've just had a few people join us. We did have someone called SK, but they seem to have dropped out. So we've got Vela. We're just going around the room, Vela, and introducing ourselves. Hey, Paul, did you mean me? I did. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear you. Hi, everyone. This is Vandana. I'm from Bangalore, level eight local guide. And uh, sorry, I'm late. I was actually just cleaning my entire garden. It's been raining for the past few days and it's been such a mess. And I came and I was about to go have a bath and I just suddenly realized it's a uh, uh, virtual presentation. So I just immediately came back. Well, the cool thing about it being virtual is you can do both things at the same time. Just don't turn your camera on. <laughs> uh, I don't want to take that risk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think everybody's experienced that with uh, people working from home lately. And you see the occasional funny thing that maybe people didn't expect to. But that's OK. Um, so we've gone around the room. Is there anybody I've missed? No? OK. Um, Hi, I have missed to introduce myself. Hi. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Falguni, a level eight local guide from Mumbai, India. And sorry I'm late. <laughs> it's all right. OK, so the, the most common themes that I heard from people then were memories and sharing. So people seem to like capturing the way the world is and capturing how it 
or how it's changing and helping themselves remember things and sharing those memories with other people, which is... Can you... Yes, who was talking? Shivani, were you talking then? No? Hi. 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 Yeah, okay. Shivani, or 21 level six local guy from Bangalore, India. And as you were telling, photograph is something that captures memory and that's the most important part about it. Cool. Oh, well, we'll uh, keep going what we're doing. I probably won't go around the room every session because that took about 20 minutes. <laughs> But that's okay. I'll just pin the presentation back up again. So hopefully you can see it and we'll go up to the next page. So in today's session, we're going to learn a little bit of the background of photography. Um, we won't learn much in the way of new skills today, but it might be, I hope it'll be interesting for what we actually get to do in the later sessions. So photography comes from two Greek words, which in English are light and drawing. So it literally means um, drawing with light or painting with light, depending on how you would do your interpretation. Um, it started with a thing called the camera obscura. So how many people have sat in a dark room where they've had the curtains mostly closed and you've been really bright outside? You might have noticed there's a little picture on the wall um, of what's happening outside. Has anybody ever noticed that? Yeah, yes, <laughs> occasionally. Cool, all right. Um, so we'll we'll talk about the obscura a little bit more in a moment. So from the obscura, photography essentially progressed to recording an image onto some kind of media. So all sorts of things have been used from um, glass plates and paper and cellulose film and all sorts of things. And more recently, we had the uh, revolution of digital. So photography is incredibly accessible now. There's very few people that don't have one of these. Uh, so there's very few people that don't have access to some kind of photo making device. And even the really cheap phones now and the really cheap cameras that you can buy are actually pretty good. They're quite surprising in what they can do because they tend to sneak in a, a little bit of software functionality as well as the camera itself. Um, our old friend film is still around. I've got some film loaded into a camera at the moment. I shot some last weekend. Um, mobile photography is revolutionizing what we do. It's revolutionizing how we share and it's um, showing us how we present our lives lots of other people. So people are using that for socials, but they're also sharing the things like maps, which is kind of where local guides comes in. Um, the newest thing that I've seen in photography is artificial intelligence is starting to play a role. Um, AI is changing the way we take photos. So when you've got one of these things, that little tiny lens on the back there is no comparison at all to the kind of lens on a full-size camera, yet the images are quite similar. And the reason they're quite similar is all the software processing that's happening in the background. So they make up for that little tiny sensor and that little tiny lens with a bit of computer imagination, if you like. Uh, and that's AI starting to play a role there. AI is turning up in other photo tools more recently too. I mean, Nanda and I had a discussion recently about some software from Topaz Labs that um, appears to be able to sharpen an out-of-focus image, which is quite impressive. So what we're going to do now, and I hope this actually works, <laughs> I'm just gonna share my another device to you. Oh, that's going to crack it up. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope this actually works. I really do. Because I'm going to have to do some drawing. And I hope my little tablet works too. So can you guys all see a white screen at the moment? Not yet. Yep. We can. Yes, yes, we can. Okay, then hopefully I can make this little tablet work properly. So if you imagine, if you will, outside your window, and I apologize for the cartoon, there's a nice little tree and you might want to take a picture of that tree. So if you think way back into, I think about the 1500s, all this sort of thing started. And that's where we get the obscure concept. So I'm just going to draw this little box over here that's going to represent our camera. And in that camera, we have a teeny weeny little hole. And 
and our image comes in from that tiny little hole and it gets reproduced in the camera. I'm actually going to erase that though because I did that the wrong way. I need to do it the other way up. But the strange thing happens to it, my drawing is going to get even worse now, is you end up upside down. So the first camera obscura wasn't really a camera at all. It was one of those rooms that was set up um, and it was set up deliberately to show what was happening outside, inside. The next advancement in that came from adding media and it doesn't really matter what it is, whether it's um, film or sensitive paper or a sensitive glass plate chemicals or as in today's world, a digital sensor or even a good old fashioned CCD sensor. The next change that came along changed things a little bit more. Where here, instead of the tiny hole, you replace that with a lens, which means the clarity of what's happening on the other side of your picture changes quite dramatically. And it, that's where you start to get some decent resolution and some decent sizing of your images. So I've just stopped sharing that. So we should be back to our presentation now. Oops. We've got Kasoon has joined a little bit late. <laughs> just so the people who have been joining a little bit recently, um, just a reminder that I am recording these sessions and they will go up onto YouTube. Um, the meat thing keeps reminding me to remind you. <laughs> So from that really primitive little drawing about the Obscura, which was the, it's as close as we're going to get to technology today. In the future sessions, we'll start looking at different kinds of cameras and different kinds of sensors and different kinds of photography and different kinds of photos and techniques and things like that. From that really simple viewpoint, um, that's where it all began. And I think from memory, it was sometime about 1540, I think might've been the first image that survived. Um, surprisingly, the first colour image was actually in the same century. It was something like 1570. And that was the first one that survived. Now, there might have been older ones than that, but they haven't survived. So they're the ones that are recognised. In today's world, it's become kind of ubiquitous. And we've all heard about that. It's about memories and sharing. Um, now, the main point of this session is to tie this into local guides, of course. So. What's the, the probably one of the most things that local guides do on maps? We'll pick one person who might give an answer. Let's go with Jane. You put your hand up, it's your own fault. <laughs> They're taking pictures. <laughs> they do indeed. And one of the really interesting things about looking at local guides taking pictures, if I have a lot of look at a lot of maps profiles. So one of the, the things you do as a Connect moderator is when someone posts something on Connect, you often go and look at their maps profile and just see what they're like and try and get a bit of an idea of what kind of person they are and what kind of things they like sharing with the world. And the one thing that I, I notice is that a lot of these people, and Adrian's videoing us now, <laughs> a lot of these people um, have one thing in common in that they actually share pretty good photos. And interestingly, I, I would have thought 20 years ago that being able to make and share a reasonable quality image was actually something that was quite hard. Um, I can remember when I got my first digital camera, it was in late, no, very early 1990s, my first camera. And if you compared it with a photo today, you would end up with a picture about this big because it was 320 pixels wide. Um, we've got Ravindu coming in as well. He's a little bit late. Uh, so coming up to the kinds of devices that we use and we're sharing to maps, technically the pictures are great, but where I think we start to lack is composition and we lack a little bit of art. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing 
for local guides because local guides, um, one of the genres of photography is the documentarian or the documentary photographer. Um, it's a photographer who captures things the way they are and portrays those things. And that's generally what's actually wanted with maps. They, generally maps doesn't want the artsy sorts of photos that I personally like to make. The other thing that I see on maps, um, and this is something I'll uh, attribute to Anander a little bit, not, not that he does this. Um, Anander always tells me when he sees one of my photos, he says, can you show me another photo from that place? And then he'll say, can you show me another one? Can you show me another one? And what, he, what he's always getting at is that you should actually take all those photos around the one degree around the circle, up and down and try to get down on the ground, get up high, go off to the left, go off to the right and all these things. Um, and see how different the scene looks. And it's quite an eye opener when you start doing things like that because the world looks very, very different from very, very different viewpoints. And it's great to do that. But one of the things that I do see lots of local guides doing is they do those 10,000 shots and then they share them all to the place on maps. That's not so good. <laughs> but anyway, that's principally what I actually wanted to cover in this all different angles. Yeah, anyway. That's principally what I wanted to cover in this session. So what I'd, I'd like to talk about now, I imagine you probably don't have a lot of questions because it was deliberately only a small amount of material for today. Um, but if you do have questions, you're welcome to ask them. But the other thing I would like to know is um, you've had a look at the meetup post that's got the whole structure of the 10 meetups um, and what I'm going to be going through. Is there anything that's not on that list that you would like to cover sometime over the next few weeks? any particular kinds of photography you'd like to cover? Sorry, Paul. I, I haven't actually seen the whole list yet, but is there anything related to um, microphotography or is it called macrophotography for the small objects? Yeah, that's macro photography. Um, I actually don't have anything for macro, but I am going to talk about macro lenses, but I can add something for macro. That would be fine. I shall make a note of that. If I can find a pen, there we go. Just always been very curious when some some people post in the local guide with the amazing small little creature with high level of details. It's just, I can never get that kind of clarity with my <laughs> phone. There, there are some tricks around macro photography, so we can certainly talk about that. The biggest trick to macro photography is don't use a macro lens. Use a zoom lens and just stand a long way away. You actually get much better depth of field. Right. So that's like, it reminds me, it's actually something else that I haven't put in that list that we need to talk about, and that is depth of field. Um, depth of field is a, a, it's a simple concept to understand, but it's a hard concept to convey. It basically, every image is of a scene and you've got the front of the scene and the back of the scene, the depth of field is the amount of it that's in focus. So if you've got a scene that big, I'm going to try and hold my pen, you can get a lot of depth of field and you get a lot of clarity in the image, or now the depth of field's only this, you get a tiny bit. So we might cover that in, in some depth, exclusive pun, in one of the sessions. Um, is there anything else that people would particularly like to see that's not there? Hey Paul, do we have um, architectural photography listed? Because I'm very keen on architectural photography right now. Sure. We don't have a specific section on architecture photography, but what I do have is two sections on composing, which will cover buildings, because there's some particular things you can do with buildings that will help you to keep your images nice and straight. And they do come up in it's about weeks six and seven, I think those two are in. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. No worries. Paul, Does anybody um, take photos tonight? David. Yes. Paul, well, um, do you have any discussions on the um, the differences between or, or which is better between film photography and digital photography? Um, I will be covering the different kinds of media. Um, my personal view is that None of them are better than any of the others. They just all have their different uses and different purposes. And whatever suits what you want to do is the one that you should use. 
So if you're photographing for maps, if you did that on film, you certainly could, but uh, it'd be a little while before you could put the images up on maps. Paul, I put the uh, um, the spreadsheet I made of your schedule uh, uh, as a link in the chat. So anyone who wants to um, have a look at the topics, they, they can go in and have a look there. Yeah, it was a funny conversation and Andrew and I had this afternoon because he said... And I've said it again now. Yeah. So I made a spreadsheet of all of your topics and I went, oh, I've already got one. <laughs> yeah, and I can see two, four, five people come in. So that's good. Um, they can they can see the stuff. Cool. Excellent. So it's also on the Connect post. Um, so if there's anything else that you can think of after this session today that you'd like to have, um, just make a post on the Connect post. If you don't want to be quite that public, you're welcome to send me a private message on Connect, or if you know me on socials, I'm Drop Bear Paul on Instagram, you're welcome to PM me there as well. One of my cats is going a bit mental over there. <laughs> what about the graduation party? <laughs> Sorry, Alpha? The graduation party. Ah, yes. That's a that's actually a good question. I left that one a little bit blank in Connect, didn't I? Yeah. What I'm what I want you all to do um, during this series of workshops is I want you all to make images. Now I know a lot of us can't go outside very much, um, but I'd like you all whether you make them inside. Excuse me, I've got hiccups. Whether you make them inside or you make them from the inside, looking to the outside, or if you're lucky enough to be able to go out, I know a lot of areas are getting some relaxation. Some of the other Australian states are relaxing on Monday. Um, I suspect Victoria probably will in the coming weeks as well. Um, and we are allowed outside to exercise, so there's no real reason why you can't take a little camera with you. I don't think I'd take that because it's a little bit obvious. <laughs> I think I'd probably take something a little bit smaller because if you're allowed out for exercise and you're caught taking photos, then you know who knows what might happen to you. So don't do anything unsafe by any means, but I do want you to create images. And I want you to pick your favorite image. Now, it doesn't have to be your technically best image. It doesn't have to be your most artistic image. I just want it to be your favorite one, the one that makes you feel something in here. Um, that image, I want you to share to me later in the series. And the graduation one, it's, um, where I am going to give everybody that comes along to these things a certificate. I think that was Adrian's idea. <laughs> do you want to do you want to describe what your certificate name was, Adrian? <laughs> no, I don't think he does. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Adrian, give us some simple tips huh? from mobile. How can we capture good photographs from mobile? We'll be going into that. Yes, that's in one of the sessions. Yes, thank and you. do you know that the, um, I'll just make a note to make that mobile specific. Um, do you know that there's actually not much difference in how you take a photo with using a phone into how you do it with any other kind of camera? So any skill that you learn on one of those devices is transferable to the other ones. So there's no right or wrong. There's no best camera. There's what works for you and I, a fairly common saying that I think is a little bit anonymous because I have no idea where it actually came from, but the best camera is the one that you've got in your hand. And with most of us, when we're traveling outside, what's the camera that we tend to carry with us most of the time? I know a few of us are weird. I tend to have a real camera everywhere I go, but we all have these, don't we? So the best camera that we have at the time is that. And there's nothing wrong with just using a phone either. Don't don't feel you need to go out and buy a camera. Because you really don't. Thank you. thank you, thank you. Are there any other things we'd like to see? Uh, we've got a second request for architecture photography. Um, I have got those two generic sessions which are covering how to shoot buildings straight. Um, so we could talk a little bit more about architecture with those. So Kasun's our artist. He might have something that he wants to add. Thank you, Paul. Uh, uh, so what's up? Uh, I think I joined a little bit late. I missed 
some usual part of first part of the the session i will <laughs> somehow I'll catch it uh, later from your recap point <laughs> hopefully yeah. So well, I, didn't, I, I, I really I, didn't cover very much material so, today because I wanted uh, people to introduce themselves um, and, and get to understand each other and meet each other today was the most uh, that's, important thing. That's great. And these days I don't use uh, any DSLR camera with me right now. I, I only have three, my 360 camera and mobile phone only. So that's uh, the devices and go, um, I have GoPro. I try to do best with uh, those three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's perfectly okay. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Let's see uh, how these things. I, I will love photography, uh, learn new things. Uh, so I will. I hope to um, keep um, in touch with uh, your <laughs> course. I hope um, it will help me uh, too. Cool. Um, so that's all of the material for this particular session. Um, one thing I will leave you with, because soon mentioned DSLR, so that's a digital single lens reflex camera. Um, big words, all they really mean is that there's a lens and the light goes through it and the light goes directly to the sensor, but it goes um, through a different path when you want to look at it. I kind of think, and this might get a giggle from Ananda, um, I kind of think that D actually stands for dinosaur. So there's nothing wrong with that kind of camera. If you've just bought one, don't feel bad. Um, if you love DSLR cameras, that's perfectly okay as well. But the newer generation of cameras, which are the mirrorless ones, don't have that strange mechanical mechanism anymore for moving the light around. They're straight through the lens onto the sensor. Um, and that offers a lot of different possibilities in those camera platforms than what you can do with the DSLR. Um, it simply can't do some of the things that the mirrorless cameras can do. So we can cover some of those aspects later. I wasn't actually including those in the workshops, but we certainly can if anybody would like to. I, I will cover the differences in the different kinds of cameras though. So did we miss anybody in the introductions earlier? We had someone else join apart from Kasun then, but I can't remember. Yes, yeah, so, Hi, uh, Rob, there you uh, are. <laughs> Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How about yourself? Thank you. My name is Raju Royal from uh, Gujarat, India, uh, level 8 local guide. Thank you. Cool. So for the for Kasun and Raju, just uh, a reminder that I am recording these sessions and they will go up onto YouTube. Um, so we've done everything that I wanted to do in this session because my main objective was to get you guys to meet each other and to meet me and we all now know a little bit about each other we all have something in common that we like making pictures and we like sharing our memories and the other thing of course we've got in common is local guides is i don't think there's anybody here who's not a local guide cool so if you think of anything you'd like me to add to the sessions that isn't there um, please comment on the post on connect or send me a private message there or on my socials um, either's fine. And I will see you all again next week. Cool. Uh, I just got a question in the chat about sending out the links to the YouTube recording. They will. Um, I'll be adding those to the post on Connect. So in that table in the post, each week after I upload the video, which hopefully is working it does say recording up in the top left hand corner but you never know it is technology um, i will add it to that post and i'll put a comment on the post so if you've got uh, remind me or i think it says email me if there's a change on this post um, just under the post you can tick that and then you'll see those any other questions um, can we know about uh, something on food photography using a cell phone and uh, also the low light restaurant photos we can have using the mobile? We definitely will be doing food photography and food photography with mobile. Um, I've actually got a guest who will be coming to join in with that one. His connect handle is Max Plus Food. So guess what he loves to do? 
Uh, thank you so much. And uh, also, there are many restaurants who which have uh, dark lighting or dim lights, and we cannot capture food very nicely there. So, is there something where we can enhance those images? Uh, you certainly can. The best thing to do is to get better light. That's not always easy. But if you've got someone who's with you and they've got a phone as well, I'll show you some techniques for how to use someone else's phone to better light your image. And that can be passive light from the screen itself or it can be the direct light of the flash. But if you do use the direct light of the flash on the phone, always use someone else's. Don't use your own because flash photos from phones are horrible. There's no getting around that. They just suck. Um, but you can use the, the flashlight or torch part of someone else's phone with a modifier like a piece of cloth, like a napkin or a, um, a paper towel or something like that. And it changes the light. So we will cover that in, in one of the sessions. Thank you so much. I can show you what I mean now. Show you what I mean now, actually. So if I've got this little minifigure here, I don't know how easy it is to see this. I've actually got pretty good light in here because um, when, when you see the photos, I'll do one that's a little bit further back, you'll see that there's a great big light above my monitor. So this little minifigure, if you were photographing that in a dark place and you just use the raw light, it gets a bit yuck. So you wash it out. Helps a bit if you go further away. But the best way to do it, paper towel's probably better than what I'm doing. But just modify the light a little bit and you'll soften it. And I don't know if you can quite see it, but you can see that the light's quite different. And always try all your different angles as well and you'll see what's happening so if you imagine that was some food, not a minifigure, you'd see what was happening with that. Uh, yeah, I can notice a difference. Uh, surely I'll try doing that. Thank you. Yep. The, the napkin's the easiest one because you've probably got it at a place where you're having food. And just a paper towel's fine. Um, you can also try and reflect light off something if you want to do that. So if there's a, a white tablecloth, you can try reflecting light from that onto the food. That one looks a bit weird, though. <laughs> I guess the napkin works better because it is available in all restaurants. Yep, and it doesn't that look, would be better. And it doesn't look like you're doing something weird. We've got someone. Yeah, who... exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't and know. And people they... stare at us while we are taking some pictures from different angles uh, of a single thing. They stare at us as if we are doing something weird. Oh, they certainly do. Um, I have been known to stand on a chair to take my food photos, and you certainly get stared at if you do that. <laughs> So we just had a new person join name Isha. I can't actually see that person in the list though. So maybe they joined and disappeared again. But um, I'm sad to say if you can hear me Isha that we're just finishing up for this week anyway. So see you next week, but an hour earlier. Cool, has anybody got cool. any other has questions? Got any other questions? Yes, Paul, I have a question. So for today's session, is there any uh, task that we have to do. I, I didn't hear. I said I thought you said you have, we have to upload some photo or something like that. And not yeah, from today's session, today session, but in the coming in session. The coming session as, oh, we okay. as we go through, as we go through, technique, technique, um, what I'd like people, what I'd to, like do people to do is try those try techniques, those techniques out, out and share those and photos. Share. But the, the most important one is for the graduation one is to find the photo that makes you feel happy. It conveys an emotion for you and share that one. And that'll be the one that we use for graduation. And the, the idea of the graduation, it'll be an exhibition and I'll display the one photo. Um, I, I'll do the displaying. So I'm going to get them all into a, a Google Photos album, which I'll share to everybody here. Um, if anybody doesn't want to do that, let me know, because, of course, you do lose a little bit of control of your image when you do that. And I'll find another way to make it work for you. But I'd prefer the Google Photos album because it's easy for me. Um, Adrian's got a visitor in the background. <laughs> um, for that one, I'll present each image. Each person will get a couple of minutes to talk about their image and why it makes them happy, why it means something to them. And that's the idea of that one being a bit of a party. So, of course, we should also bring along some 
have your favorite drink or whatever you want to have for that one as well. Nice, cool. sounds good. Cool. Any other questions? We can all watch the back of Adrian now. <laughs> oh, well, I'll Maybe wrap that up then. Kasun, sorry, did you have a question? No, no, I think he's on another call or something, I guess. Yeah, I, mean. I think he's been called away. That's okay. Um, so if there's no other questions, I'll wrap this up now, and we will see you hopefully again next week. And hopefully I didn't bore you to tears and that you found it at least a little bit interesting. And it's, it's great to see so many smiling faces from all around the world. It's really cool. So we'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks, Paul. Great session. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Paul. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. If anybody would Thank like you, to Paul. Thank you, Paul. Let me know. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Cool. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you, Thank Paul. You. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you, Paul. Bye. Thank you, Paul. Bye. See ya. Oh, got four more people join. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> bye, all. <laughs>